going into the game against Georgetown, you know, obviously you're coming in underdog, but what's the feeling in the locker room like? I mean, you know, how confident were you and the team that not only could you compete, but even beat Georgetown? Uh, we were really confident. Uh, we had watched a lot of film. Uh, we said it before, Coach Enfield really instilled a quiet confidence in us all season. Uh, we had played with all the with a lot of teams in the country that were of equal levels, like Duke. We played with them for 32 minutes. They went on a crazy run, and then we beat Miami at home. We competed against Iowa State, competed against St. John's all on the road in tough environments. So going into that game, we were confident. We knew it was going to be almost like a home game for them because it was a lot closer. But we had watched them on film. We had seen that their style was – they didn't play as on the pace as we did. They tried to really break down in half course. Our goal was to try to get them into transition. And we thought if we could do that, then we had a great chance. You know, going into halftime, you guys led by basket. And at what point of the game was it not just like, okay, you know what, we're – we're not just going to stick around and, you know, be a punching bag for this team, but, you know, we can play with them. Not only can we play with them, but we can beat them. At what point, you know, was that for you guys and the team? We talked about it at halftime. We'd gone in and we hadn't gotten out in transition. We'd almost had to play their style. And we were up by a basket still, and we knew that, obviously, they had great players. I mean, Otto Porter could just take over a game. Of course, yeah. Um, but we saw that we had competed a whole half playing their style, so if we could get them to try to play our style, then – that could really change the game, and then we could really show what we were capable of. So we talked about that in halftime and kind of changed a few things on defense to try to create more turnovers and try to really get out on the open floor, and we were able to do that in the second half. Yo, so many people, when they talk about the game, they sort of, you know, remember and look back to your dunk, you know, the lob from uh, Brett Comer and your one-handed slam, and people say that was, you know, like the icing on the cake. I mean, even Reggie Miller was just, like, speechless if you listen to the play call, but... You know, throughout the whole tournament, what would you say was your greatest memory or experience of the whole thing, you know, with that in mind? Um, I mean, as a single play goes, it's either between that or the dunk against San Diego State for me. Um, but in the memory is when we real when the buzzer went off and we had finally won and looking to the crowd, and I saw my family. I had uh, some friends from the community I grew up in were in the crowd, seeing fans kids that I went to school with, boosters, and we all were in front of our crowd kind of pointing at them and celebrating together. But it was getting that first upset and seeing that and being able to celebrate with my family. Um, I face-to-face, but I could see them celebrating with me and enjoying the moment together. Uh, and then with the team, too, we were all together on the court and celebrating. And um, it was yeah. – the whole game, you have emotions. You're worrying about, all right, we got to win. You're not really thinking like, oh, we're upsetting them. I was thinking, like, all right, I got to get back and make sure Otto Porter doesn't get a basket. I got to yeah. get the final buzzer went off, and it was that's when things really hit. Like, all right, we just won, and no one expected us to. And like, looking in the crowd, you see, we had a decent sized section, being that we had to travel from Florida. Uh, so I'd say it was like looking up at them and celebrating with during that. Time. The fans that you guys were good enough, but. You know, what did it sort of mean to not only put Florida Gulf Coast basketball on the map, but just represent the school and bring home a win for them? Like, can you talk about the feelings of, you know? Of- uh, yeah, it's something that I've talked with a lot of people. It's um, a feeling that I feel I'm, I must have a connection with the university in a way that a lot of kids I don't think get when they go to college. And whether they love their school and whatever I feel like I have, because I did get to represent a university that I'm in love with and had the best time in my life. I got to represent it on a national scale and um, got to really bring a lot of coverage because after we won the first game the next day on Sports Center they're showing all the all the promo videos of the campus showing the beach showing uh, pick my Instagram of like my dorm room and yeah. uh, brought a lot of attention to the place we went to school and did a lot for the university especially in getting recruits to come and now you see they've gone on the back it's three in yeah. the last six years and um so the feeling I had to get played that when I did it, I don't think I really uh, could understand or even value how much we are doing for the school. And looking back on it now, how much of an impact we have, I, you're able to grasp it a lot more. You see the program build into sustained success, and year after year they're top in the A-7 and doing really well in mid-majors and um, having a chance to compete against these big schools. I think yeah. it's years later.
the ground total effect you had. Ray John Tucker went viral for his crazy dunk that uh, broke the you know broke the scoreboard. I just want to you know ask like, a did you get to see it, and if so, do you think it lived up to the hype of Dunk City? It was it worthy of a Dunk City? I, I did watch it. I was uh, actually texting with uh, my assistant coach about it, and I'm not one. I watch games. I'm pretty quiet. Don't cheer. And I was laying down on my couch, and it was almost uh, that game started at nine in my time, so it was just around 11 p.m. And he did that dunk, and it like I still yelled and. It was probably the most hyped I've gotten watching them play as far as one individual play. One of the big things we heard was uh, Coach Enfield and basically being the most interesting man in the world. And we, uh, I'm sure the fans would probably like to know as well as, you know, just about any college basketball fan, you know, what was probably like the most interesting or funny, you know, story that you have about Coach Enfield? Is the, is the rumor true? Is he the most interesting man in the world? Definitely very interesting is coaching style is up there uh one of the funniest things i i remember we were warming up for i think it was the conference championship game mm-hmm. the day before doing our practice um and someone comes in to watch kind of we'll see what we're doing and our warm-up drill is we're playing tags with tag with his two daughters and we're just running around and 